Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. I don't know what it is. Lately, I'm on a, a kick of things you take for granted. You know, you just take a second. We should take nothing for granted. We should have lots of gratitude in our life. It's been proven that moves our life forward. But things you take for granted when you see traffic and you see how cargo gets moved around, you know, the things that we enjoy, even you know, it can be a cup of coffee. How'd that get here? It's all through transportation. I believe we take it for granted. Even the, the drivers and what they do and the hours they put in, we're going to talk about that today, specifically training these drivers that transport all the stuff that we enjoy and retaining them. It's not easy. It's think about how many trucks are on the road right now. Add Amazon to that. I've got somebody who is behind all of the safety in that and the training. And he's been helping companies, motor carriers for, for years, get this right. He is the founder and president of DOT training solutions. Matt Freeman is back with us. Hey Matt, how you doing? Hey, doing well, Steve. Thanks for having me back. Uh, yeah. You, you said a lot there. There's, it's amazing every day. What, how things are transported the products, the coffee we drink, the uh, the daily groceries we need, you know, it's all by transportation. Sure. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Everything, when you think about it, everything has to get transported. And I don't, you know, think deep about that stuff until the moment like this comes up. And it's like your car, that probably got transported. It was on a carrier. It may have come overseas, then got transported on wheels. Yet, like you said, the food, ever, clothing, all of it comes in typically at some point on a truck or some type mm -hmm. of motor carrier. So keeping those safe on the road, training the drivers to make sure they are safe and also best practices, all of that, I believe it's a huge undertaking. This is what your company does. But to my surprise, there's, there's a shortage of some of these, not just the drivers, but the technicians involved in all of this? Yeah, absolutely. I get calls all the time. And, uh, you know, the drivers, you don't have the drivers like you used to. Uh, gr no, gr growing up, you know, uh, you know, in the 80s, my family drove trucks and stuff. And, you know, everybody drove a truck. It's just, it was hmm. a thing. If, if you weren't working in an industry or military or uh, some type of law enforcement or something, you'd, it seemed like everybody drove a truck. And today, uh, it's, it's not like it used to be. Um, for you know, ever since the pandemic, you know, drivers you don't see the drivers out there like you used to. Hmm. Um, you have companies that you know always hiring, constantly hiring drivers. Now, it's never been a a shortage that uh, you know drivers. You know, they'll go they'll go from one company to the next just you know for more money. That's always been a thing for drivers. You know. Someone's going to pay a dollar more. They're going to go that that direction. But sure. as far as shortages, you know, my customers are constantly saying, hey, "I'm trying to get drivers. Uh, we're super busy." Um, you know, so it, it's still a thing out there. Uh, for a long time, they they tried to promote women in driving uh, to, to boom that up pretty good. There's some you know groups out there that work with that. Um, some of the states, you know, because no, we're talking over the road, you know, uh, for CDLs. Um, uh, you know, now states that they've, they've talked about, uh, can order, or let me back up in order to drive an interstate commerce in a CDO vehicle, you got to be 21. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then there's, there's some issues there. It's, uh, if you're in the state and you're intra only, and you never leave the state, you can be 18. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of things there. So they're needing folks who are over 21 now to get out there, uh, and drive. A lot of these veteran guys have been driving the roads for a long time. They're, you know, they're ready to call it quits. You know, they're retiring out because they've been doing it forever. Uh, so, you know, there is a shortage. Wow. And uh, so it's kind of crazy right now. Uh, I thought it was over with till I had a big conversation with a group of my customers. And they all they all still said the same thing. Hey, trying to keep drivers, uh, always hiring. Just the every, it was an everyday norm. Still is an everyday norm. Mm. We're always going to need drivers when you, you it, and, and yes, you, you brought some, some memories in my mind going back in the day that there were more there. You would always hear. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jimmy drives a truck, you know, for this company, you rarely mm -hmm. hear that, but it's the same thing as plumbers. 
You can't mm-hmm. find plumbers. There's a lot of free training in that trade and the trades be electricians as well. Um, I don't know why. Yeah. I a younger generation just doesn't see that it's a glamorous job, but heck it pays a lot of money and we need it. And as far as yes. I can see, we're going to need plumbers in our lifetime. There's a, there's a, we're always going to need them. Same thing right. with drivers and trucks more so now would think of it, think of it. 30 years ago, 25, whatever. Did you ever think that there would be a, there would be more need for drivers now than there was back then? And now when we look, well, we got all this technology. Yes, but that's just exponentially created more demand for drivers. <laughs> like Amazon, yeah. OMG. Yeah. <laughs> like, like there it They're is. Huge. Yeah. When they, when they got into their own, doing their own trucks and not only their own trucks, you know, they third party out just like everybody else does. Mm. Your home, your home delivery folks, you know, these guys that are going to Amazon, you know, they're not always an Amazon truck. They're on their own purse vehicle. So they're still operating in commerce. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, it's really crazy out there is, you know, and then you look at the mechanics. I have customers who are opening up shops, but but they, their only dilemma is not opening up a new facility or affording it. It's now they got to have somebody who can work on the vehicles that come in. So the technicians are can be an issue to where they want to make sure that, hey, we got a good trained mechanic uh, who's working. You know, the, the, we're talking about companies who work on trucks. You know, they're working on the trailers, the the, the tractors themselves. And um, I get again, it's every day we, we I get calls. Hey, I'm do, I'd be doing better if you could find me a mechanic or you wow. can find me a registered inspector. And it's just uh, I don't know what's going on in the world today, just with everything and why, why folks aren't out there jumping at the, you know, jumping at it. Uh, they're great fields. Um, and we got to have them. If we don't have mechanics and inspectors and, and drivers, um, I, I don't know. It's, it's uh, one of those things. I, I don't know what, mm. I, I don't know how to see the future with. It. <laughs> Do you think maybe Matt, that people just aren't aware that this exists? You know, if, if somebody, as a little bit of, you know, as into cars, let's just say, you know, maybe fixing things back when they were a little bit younger, whatever it might be, and doesn't realize that, yeah, there's a shortage of technicians in this arena. Same thing with uh, registered inspectors. Unless you know, you don't know. So maybe it's the awareness out there that we don't realize that these uh, these positions are available and in need right now. You know, I, th- I think some, some of it is, uh, I'll skip over to the registered inspector side of it is the requirements, the experience levels. There's a lot of folks out there who want to do it and go out there and make a good living at doing it. But they don't have, you know, per the regulations on on the inspector side of it, uh, registered inspectors who work on the cargo tanks, they got to have a minimum of three years experience plus plus training to do it on their own. So they can go work for somebody. They just can't go out and sign off on the inspection like we've talked in the past. So that's one issue on the inspector side. Um, the driver side, you know, the drivers, their primary thing is they need to go down, get a CDL, get a permit and, uh, you know, start working with somebody, you know, so they can get their experience in. Mm. Um, there's so many different ways they can do that. I mean, it's like, it's really that simple, but, you know, they can go to CDL schools. Um, they can go to, um, you know, work with a company who's going to work with them to build them up, you know, help them get that CDL. So there's there's so many ways out there that it's not like it's hard. They just they got to go. They're open up. You should say open up the yellow pages. You know, <laughs> open up the you know open up the ads. Look, there, there, there's jobs there now. You know, uh, wherever kids go to find things today, I don't even know where to start anymore. Oh but. yeah, then it, that was replaced by Craigslist, and I don't know if the right. you know, that is still. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, I mean, even I'm sure if you looked on Indeed.com or Monster. You know, those jobs are there. Let's let's look at the qualifications. You know, we, we talk about not enough technicians. We talk about not enough uh, inspectors to take care of it. Uh, can we just, you know, briefly look at what, what's needed to be in these positions? Yeah. So but basically, um, like, like on the driver, what, what do they need? You know, they just need to have a, a good driver's license, really. They need, they need to have the right CDL. You know, part part of that is they have to get a medical card if they have if they're an interstate driver, regardless if it's CDL. 
uh, pass the medical test. It's a very simple, simplistic test. It's just a physical. It's all it is, physical. Okay. Uh, once you pass the physical, um, you know, you, you turn it into your CD with your CDL and it goes into your CDL if it's a CDL. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you're, then you're good to go to find a, you know, to go out and find a job. Um, or if you're, if it's, if you're involved with, um, you know, it is a CDL vehicle. The other thing they have to make sure, um, is that they, they pass a drug test. Sure. So, um, you know, you, you can't, you, there's, it's a five panel test that you have to be, that you're in, uh, or you have to take. And, um, you know what I mean? That's just five different drugs that they test you for. Okay. So, uh, you know, you just gotta, you gotta stay clean, uh, keep driving, uh, you, uh, you know, it's not a, not a lot to it. So if, if you, if you're not afraid to get out there and drive a big rig, uh, or even a local, you know, not a big rig, but just another a smaller commercial vehicle, uh, that they're still needed. You don't need anything for that, but just a, uh, you know, depending on the state that you're in, the commercial license they require. Do you need a CDL if you're going to be an inspector or a technician? No. Okay. Not a requirement. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So, but I'll, I'll, there are a handful of like technicians that have to have a CDO because what are they doing? They're probably pulling these trucks in and out of the shops, right? Right. Okay. Uh, there's, there's probably, there's probably a good handful of them that do. Um, but a lot of times what they do, they'll have a driver, you know, come in, do the pulling in for them because it already has one. Or if it's on a private lot, they don't need anything. They can just pull it in. Sure. But once they get on the interstate, you know, they they have another shop on the other side of the road. They cross that intersection. Guess what? Now they're legal because they just, they're in commerce now. Mm, wow. Okay. Um, I got to believe there's so many people out there that uh, may work in a shop or, you know, have an affinity for fixing trucks, but never even considered that this could be part of it. Um, does this pay well, in your opinion, based on, you know, just looking at other other positions related to it. I think it pays well. It, you know, really depends on the employer. Sure. You know, obviously, and the, depending on uh, some some places, the customers, they have tech levels. So you have tech one, two, and three. So depending on where you're going, you know, you can just go up. The more, the, basically, the more you know how to do, the more pay there is. Now, if, I can't give you an exact amount that's sure. average. I don't know because it's all over the board. Right. Um. But yeah, it's a very good pay. And you know, one thing for as a to be a mechanic or to be to do uh annual inspections, like we talked about uh, I think when Randy was on, you know, they do the like your vehicles, your annual vehicle inspections. All they need to have is one year's experience. Uh work, you know, working in a shop, going to a tech school, you know, a lot of these mechanics out there, they probably got a GED or high school diploma. Because that's all they've ever done was work with their hands. Right. And that's all they need. They got the experience. Some of these guys grow up on their fa family farms and work on the tractors and the vehicles. And they're still, they'll still meet the requirements. So you don't have to have a whole lot. You just got to know uh, trucks, motors, you know, engines, things like that. Even looking at school now, so many high schools, and even if you go to even start with a community college, they don't push the trades anymore. It's all about getting you ready, even high school, get you ready for college, get you ready for college. All this other stuff has kind of gone by the wayside. I remember when I went to school, there was auto shop. There was, mm -hmm. I loved it, industrial arts. There was all of that. You don't really see that so much more. Now it's prep for college. What if you don't want to go to college? What if that's not your plan? You just you know, you want to learn a trade or you're handy with your hands, whatever it might be. Um, it's not out there. And I think this needs to get reversed. We're in a, we're in a bad situation. And I just, I don't mean just for engines, same thing mm -hmm. with plumbers, same thing with all of these other trades right now. Yes. No, it, it, you're, you're so right. And, and you don't hear about the schools like you used to, you know, the, the tech schools used yeah. to be, you used to really hear a lot about it. And I work with some of the tech schools, you know, I've been called, you know, give my, you know, my advice and things for them. Uh, volunteered if needed, you know, to come out and give a talk. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's so much opportunity, and especially these guys, the guys who don't want to go four years of school, 
They want to go to school and learn about what they're going to do for a living. Right. And it's a lot of them is, uh, you know, you pick that trade. If it's a plumber, if it's a, you know, uh, which is a pipe fitter or an electrician, you go to school to learn these trades and there's unions and different things out there that they can get involved with, uh, you know, to get into the field. So th- I don't think there's any excuses out there of as far as ex- educational experience for folks. Uh, it's just that they need, you know, I want to see them get out there and, and drive, see the country, go out there and do the inspections, work on work on the vehicles. Uh, I come from a past of family who drove trucks. Mm. Um, like so my both my grandfathers had uncles, cousins in Southeast Missouri, where my family come from. You know, you didn't have a whole lot of work, so you either drove a truck. Uh, you know, got in the military, went law enforcement, worked the factories. You know, just done a lot of work down there. And uh, or did construction. <laughs> construction was always an option. Worked the fields. A lot of people, work, you know, worked the farm fields and stuff because that's that's what they did. Um, so there's lots of there's lots of things out there that I've never understood why, uh, you know, young young generation and you know even middle middle and older generation aren't doing. I, I don't. You know, there's so much out there. Yeah, you you mentioned construction. You nobody would do anything without the supplies being transported. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> they wouldn't and, and that's an issue. That, that, that's an issue right there with anybody I know doing construction right now. Wow. They're still waiting on stuff to get transported to them. It's either been on a ship waiting to get in a truck or someone don't, they don't have a truck to get it to where they need it to go. Jeez. And, and during COVID, it was even worse. Uh, supply chain mm-hmm. and all of that. When we talk about a technician connected mm-hmm. to motor carriers what does that technician do? Or are we talking a mechanic? Is that what that is? We're, we're, talk, we're talking a mechanic. Okay. Yeah, it just depends on what field you're in. You know, uh, some people call their inspectors techs. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I always try to separate, are you a mechanic? Are you a registered inspector? Or are you both? <laughs> um, because, you know, just because you, you work in a shop and you're doing uh, mechanic work, okay, you're working on engines, doesn't mean you're working on the tank, too. Gotcha. So, okay. you, you know, sometimes you got guys that are very diverse and they can do it all. Sometimes you have, you know, Joey does, you know, this job, Susie does this job, you know, someone else mm-hmm. comes in and does the finished product. It just depends on, you know, the shop and what they're doing. If you are a registered inspector, do you have to be able to repair or it's completely separate, maybe somewhat related? You got to know the inner workings to some degree. Um, but do you have to be able to repair the vehicle at the same time? Yes and no. So a repair on a, on a, for an inspector, okay, is welding. Okay, you're, you're actually welding to the tank. So uh, if they are certified to, uh, let's say, a crack, there's a crack, or I just keep it simple, uh, and the crack's got to be repaired. So can they can they repair that? Yes, if they if they have the certification to do that. Okay. But if they don't, then someone else in the shop would have to do it, or they would have to send that tank over someone else to have that well done. Um, so th- it could be both. You know, if, if they if that shop has the qualifications uh, with an R stamp to do that um, through MBIC, it's the it's the uh, program that gives you the certifications to you know be able to do that uh, the certificate certifications. So. Um, yeah, I mean, you can, it just depends. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of your bigger shops will have someone in there who can do that. So they're not third partying out their own business. So it's, it just, your value is higher if you can take care of all of that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What do you learn? The more you know. Let's, let's talk about that. How do you, let's say somebody does some repair, maybe they've done some auto repair, uh, maybe worked on trucks, uh, okay you know i know i do know a lot of a lot of guys that have done that over the years and uh got out of it or moved into different positions because it Mm -hmm. it can beat on your body after a a long time Mm -hmm. but if if you wanted to change it up how would you learn this aspect of the business um you know again just pick it up as a trait working with someone else uh go to school because there are different types of welds and things that you can you can you're allowed to use so just depending on what type of welder they are, mm. uh, I'm not a welder, so I'm only I can only talk about this much about what the weld. I mean, I understand it, but that doing the actual weld, I'm not a welder. Uh, it just it just depends. Uh, really, um, most of the folks I know who learned either went to school or they were mentored by someone to show them how to do it. 
and then and then you get and then you uh, then you got to send the samples to a test you know so the association knows that you understand you know know what you're doing so you'll uh, every so often you have you'll have to uh, get a piece of metal and do a certain weld on it for example and it sends it in and I'll, you know make sure you did it right and everything else so there's different ways they do it um they also have auditors and they come out and make sure that you're keeping everything up to speed because there's you know there's a uh, compliance side to that as well uh you know if you do a repair on a tank you got you got to keep track of that and record it and so there's, there's a process to it so it's a little bit of a it's, it's a quite a bit of a learning curve on that side of it but i tell you what i have folks all the time again customers ask me and if i can get a good welder or if I, you know, it's it's another one of those things that just learning to do a little different trait, but it's such a specialty because it is a cargo tank. Mm. You know, not saying not anybody can walk up and say, "Hey, I'm a welder, I can do this." It don't work that way. You got to meet that criteria to do those certain welds. There's welders. There's another one. <laughs> you know, we take we take that for granted, but mm -hmm. look at everything that's around us. There is always going to be a need for a welder of certain types now we're talking about a certain type here cargo tanks mm -hmm. but just in general there's always going to be a need there's always going to be a need for a welder yeah it, it's it's a it's a crazy world right now with, with things um every time i turn around i have a customer and you know or i get a phone call hey i want to do this but um what do i need to do inspectors mm. they'll call me or i'll have a guy who's a driver Hey, I've been driving. I've been I've been transporting uh, cargo tanks most of my life. I know how to look at them, inspect them, work on them. But then the criteria comes down to I want to I want to be a registered inspector. I want to do the inspections on them. Well, do you have three years experience? You know, so now it comes back to every day. Hey, I want to do this, and then I have customers going. Hey, can you can you find me one? And but the problem is now with the regulations, there's kind of a like okay. Now the regulations aren't allowing it to move forward because all your mentors and everybody's got the experience are retiring out. Mm -hmm. So, so right now they're working the regulations. We're trying to get the regulations changed to loosen that experience. So instead of three years experience, we get somebody with just an example, maybe a year and a half, you know, or uh, they're able to go out and work on a specific tank and do so many inspections to get them the experience to see if the right if the rules can not be more lenient, but a little bit looser on folks who are qualified. So that would definitely help. And then once you, once that happens, you're going to see a big boom into uh, the repair uh, area, you know, inspecting and repairing these tanks. When you think of the magnitude here, oh, yeah. huge in terms of the size of the country, the number of vehicles on the road, all of this, um, yeah, we got to do something, you know, just in, yeah. in that. And, it, and it's growing. It's not getting shorter. Right, you right. Know, you you're still got, you got chemicals, you got gases, you got fuels. And, and every time, um, you know, no matter which way the direction the political side goes with different things and fuels and gases, there's always going to be cargo tanks out there got to be inspected. Yeah. Yeah, without um, a doubt. Uh, Matt, how do we connect with you? If uh, this resonates with somebody or... Has, somebody has a question or even is connected to a company that does uh, motor carrying. How do we find you? Yeah, uh, you can uh, give me a call at 573-416-8203. Or you can reach me at my website, uh, dottrainingsolutions.com. And my email is matt at dottrainingsolutions.com. Interestingly, this all comes down to one thing safety first that's what we're talking about here yes it is yeah wow and all the more reason why it's even more important you know we're not just talking just about commerce and and the economy it's the safety as well uh thanks for bringing a lot of this to light you know as we talk during these podcasts uh, really appreciate it and thanks for being here today all right thanks for having me steve we'll Take be right care. back Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, game show host, father of five, and all-around big dude. I'm also an expert on drama. I know all kinds of drama. There's the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids. 
There's the bad kind like season-ending injuries. There's the necessary kind like having an agent in Hollywood. And there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your high school diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. Or text DIPLOMA to 97779. Message and data rates may apply. Reply STOP to opt out. That's DIPLOMA to 97779. And leave the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council.